a couple of frames I struggled, but on the whole, I think that's the best match I've played all weekend. I felt good, and, and, and I took away some nice finishes. Yeah, it looked like once you settled, you you were really at home. Just going to get the, the next match off and rumbling. It's Scott Pope against Chris Day. Still Sean Story and Tom Cousins to come on the main table this evening before we leave you tonight. So just as these guys take on their first frame, it's Scott at the table. Some some day for you, mate. It, it, the performance there felt like the, as you say, it, it looked like the best, but it looked like it had been building all day. And I suppose if you can't take a load of confidence from coming back from nine two down, then when are you? But it's 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 a long day to try and sustain that sort of level, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. And see, to be honest, I'm I'm kind of over the moon because, I mean, I know we're speaking to. Um, I think it was last night. Um, I've got a bit of problem with my hands this weekend as well, and and, and see they constantly been on the table. Always, it's a good thing. But I mean, I'm kind of sacrificing, kind of a wee bit of through the pain barrier. I'm, I'm not the one for excuses. I've played with it for like a long time, but um, this weekend I've just seemed to be bad. But maybe it's a good omen, and and I'm also trying. I'm trying to no lay Simon Webb down. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he gave you all the pressure early on this week, didn't he? Um, that match there against Jack, it, it looked like, at the start of the match, it, it looked like you just needed a couple of frames. Was that just because you'd just come off the back of a monster match on the outside tables and it was just getting to grips with the arena and cause the table just does play that little bit different, doesn't it? Aye, and uh, against Lewis, when I went on and played the outside tables, um, it took me a couple of frames to, I mean, Lewis dished the first few anyway, but it's just the angles just throw off a wee bit that, that that's kind of i would say four four three four balls faster mm. um so the more you play on that it was like the last up um tour event down blackpool like the more you get to play on that table i mean it, it sometimes feels effortless and you just feel as if you can't miss and it's always a good it's always a good like a good feeling um, and i've not had that for a long while but i mean i feel good i've been putting the time in yeah i spoke to simon about that um and that's uh I mean, that everybody knows that's what you need to be doing, but I've, I used to get away with that just pre-COVID. I, I didn't really put time in. There was that many tournaments, but I, and against this class, like uh, this field of players, like you, you can't get away with not putting time in. You'll get the odd match where you maybe play well and stuff, but no, you need to be putting the time in. And, and always, like, it's showing. I'm, I'm feeling confident. I look well now, so I'm, I'm, I'm buzzing with that. Yeah, as you should be, mate. Well, we're not going to keep you any longer mate because my goodness me you've earned the right to uh you going book ducks <laughs> yeah to, to a drink and a bit of food and, and yeah absolutely a lie down as well congrats on the, on the terrific run today Cheers, mate, mate. We'll, Thank you. we'll see you tomorrow and uh and well done as well for sneaking in a bit of commentator's curse on the interview there as well you can't miss on these tables as scott pope missed one that he would love to have back and it's going to bring chris day to the table and also in the the commentary box, a, a fairly swift substitution as well as from one Scott there to another. We're going to bring in Scott Yardley onto comms in just a moment. Headset going on. Great run this weekend that Scott has had. Seems to be a bit of a, a thing in common. Quite a few of the Scots have have gone quite well. Scott Pope here has had a brilliant weekend, came through on the winner's side, which is a qualifier very, very impressive. And uh, we can indeed say a very good evening to Scott Yardley. Good evening, mate. Good evening, Steve, and uh, good evening, viewers. And um, yeah, a bit of a surprising miss from Scott there in the first frame, but like I said, he's probably the first time he's played on this table this weekend, isn't he? He's on the outside tables. Yeah, can't, can't miss on through. them, is there? As Goobsy said, right, as he yeah. missed that one. Well, Goobsy can't miss on them, but... Uh. <laughs> yeah, not as easy as he makes it look, hey. But yeah, good, um, obviously a good match-up here. I believe Scott is one of the two remaining challengers that are left in of the... I think uh, Reese Townsend's obviously through to the quarter-final. Yes, Reese is already through to the quarters, which is a huge result for him. No, it's a really good, really good weekend. Yeah, absolutely. We'll talk more about your exploits throughout this match as well, because <laughs> I want to give you your flowers. I didn't get you on the arena table, but the performances you were pulling out were were fantastic, really, as we see CD get his first go at the table. The cut break that's been pretty faithful to him all weekend, staying so, and he gets his first go in frame number two. But I think Chris does something quite similar to myself. I think he tends to start matches with a cut break, and then if it doesn't work, he pulls out the, uh, the break cue. Uh, he does. He does strike it really, really like, nice as well. The, the cut break. Well, he's a bit of a Swiss Army knife for breaks, Chris. He's, he's a bit of a tinkerer. But I know, I know. He was telling me earlier that on the outside, because he's he's not playing the arena table yet. He's been outside tables all the way through, and he's been saying 
don't trust my own racks, I cut break <laughs> every single frame. That's very, that's quite true, because I, mean, I, I, I do cut break more often than not, and it's actually quite nice. You haven't got to stand over the rack and observe it, you know. Yeah. As long as, you, as long as you're hitting the second one flush, it doesn't really matter about the front ball as much. But yeah, it's a bit of a tricky shot here. He just needs to sort of beat the yellow and come back out. He's got quite a fortunate there to come off the jaw. Hand up, an apology. So I mentioned it's quite a friendly quarter of the draw. The winner of this match will head through, obviously, to the quarterfinals and will take on Ryan Pisani. And for as well as Ryan's played this weekend, I think both players, Pisani and one of Pope and Day, would massively fancy their chances of a semi-final. Possibly, but I mean... There's no easy matches, but... No, I mean, the fact that Ryan came through against Christie as well a few moments ago, and uh, mm. Christie's just been ridiculous this weekend, I mean... Yeah, on fire, hasn't he? He was playing on the table, uh, I think, two to my left this morning against Luke Gilbert. Didn't see him for much then. No, it was just... Um, <laughs> In and out? Yeah, there was one frame, I think... I think uh, I'd broken dry again, and... Uh, Reese was at the table just, you know, surveying the, the lay of the land and the route and everything else. And I think he turned the clearance down. And then I came to the table and played a lot of turn. I can't remember the exact detail. And I, it was 4-1 over, the, over there when we started the frame. And I looked across and it was 7-1. I'm like, oh, they just had three. Of course, he just dished three frames in the time that we've taken to play, like, about he, half a dozen shots. It was crazy. Yeah, I mean, he was 10-1 and out in, I think, 30 minutes. It was <laughs> extraordinary, really. Uh, Chris is a little bit short here on this uh, on this red. So, going back to what you said a moment ago, it was his first game on the arena. He's probably expecting a bit more of a roll and a bit more of a reaction from playing on the outside table. So he's probably hit that as hard as he would have done to, to land where he is now. But obviously, he was expecting it to run a little bit further because he's on the uh, on the quicker cloth. Yeah, so it's just about judging the line here. He's not too worried about the pot, although it does need making, it's just where the cue ball is ending up here. This is really awkward. Um, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he just tried to go through the gap and then maybe just even just left a double. So the gap of the two yellows, which he's done. Oh, he's in off. Yeah, that's gone. So very good chance for Scott to get his uh, first frame on the board and I think it'd be the plant first shot, just get rid of his yellow above the eight. Yeah, saw one for CD, and uh, both he and Scott Pope are going to get a bit of a freebie to get their last 16 campaign off to a off the flying start. Oh, sorry to interrupt. So I didn't know Steve. Um, sorry, Scott's uh, nickname was Lucky. I've never never heard that. No, n me neither. And from what I've seen of, of Scott Pope, I wouldn't ever dream of calling him lucky. I think he's a really good player. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, didn't he's strike me as that uh, that sort of character. But he's not a ball run Bingham, I don't think. So <laughs> no, it's the uh, first time I've ever seen that this evening. So Scott was in uh, Pontins last weekend. So it was the county finals last weekend, England trials, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, and Scott came through the uh, the trial system there for the A's. So he'll be going to internals. <laughs> Obviously, I saw the draw uh, before the weekend. I I wanted to draw a Chris Mellon, um, a Phil Harrison, um, well, whoever, any of the top players. And yeah. obviously, I've managed to bag a world champion, which is what I wanted. I wanted to play somebody really good because, obviously, now with the the way the ultimate is now, it's obviously a pro and a challenger. So we don't get a chance to play these guys anymore. You know, yeah. so that's why it's such a good event. So we get the chance to. You know, to play against the pros and pit our wits against them, and um, and not just yourself, of course, but plenty have shown that that we, we always talk about how good the depth is, but plenty have shown that you know, not to be trifled with, yourself included, with a really well, good run. How many um, how many pros had to battle their way through the loser side oh, to be at this stage? I mean, there was quite a lot of um, defeats in the opening round. Um, but yeah. yeah, a little backstory on the uh, John McAllister thing as well. Um, I played him twice previously in. Uh, the first of seven tournaments. Basically, just sat there and watched him beat me seven nil, seven nil. Mm. And I thought he'll do that. Yeah, it, I, it was. It's the best pool I've ever seen. Put it that way. It was mm -hmm. just. It was just perfection. I mean, I had a couple of dry breaks, but that I didn't really. I didn't get to the table. Um, and I was three nil down on. I don't know what day it is. Yesterday. Yes, feels and like a long uh, time ago. I know. Yeah. So in live frames, I was seventeen nil down to John. 
<laughs> so to then win, you know, 10 of the next 13 was, um, yeah, I was really proud. Really proud of that. Yeah, and I was speaking to, uh, I think it was Matt Cook about it, who I know you, you know really well. Of course, yeah. And um, he, he was saying it's the, it's the best, some of the best stuff he's ever seen you play. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's a strange one. You know, I was 50 last year and um, kind of, yeah, like I said, playing the best ball I've ever played. So and Unlock I, that seniors tour card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I really enjoy the seniors. Um, I've stopped probably play county seniors. I qualified for senior trials at, at last weekend, but I didn't do very well. Race to three is a bit, a little bit brutal. But um, yeah, I really enjoying the, the senior side of things. Um, obviously with Dylan, Dylan Leary and Eddie Barker as mm. well. So we've got a good little, good little crew, so to say. Um, yeah, I love it. Just playing lots of pool at the moment, and I, and I think obviously the more you play, the your confidence grows and playing a lot more tournaments but I mean going back it, it, it's the rule change that's that's what's transformed my my game you know I was getting a bit bogged down in world rules and lose my patience a little bit with yeah <laughs> certain shots and I love these rules because you you can't win unless you play well yeah agree you know so, sometimes in in world rules and you know I'm not going to say hammer rule sets but no so, not at all sometimes in world rules m better knowledge of the rules rather than better playing yeah. at the table would, would cause you to win the match then I think it was Ryan Hopkinson I think Ryan didn't have any any luck at all from the break really nice bloke first I've really spoken to him and then and as we say that the it's quite unlucky to go in off on the cut break as well. Yeah, and not a single ball contacted as he exists across the uh, but the triangle area. If you look though, it, it, he has hit it a little bit low. And what I mean by that is, is you're trying to get the second hit. So once you hit that cut break, you're trying to go off the side cushion and, and go into him a second time. So you're getting a, like two goes of getting a ball basically. Yeah. Um, and that was just a little bit low and skiddy, but it's still unlucky to go across twice. Yeah, Chris took out a lovely finish in frame number three and with the break was looking to establish a little bit of a of an early lead I mean I'm going to give you a little bit of a credit now as well I mean this is obviously a new experience for you guys having hour and 10 minute matches to commentate on rather than the <laughs> the 20 minutes and <laughs> as well so you're putting a shift in yourself this weekend isn't it, Steve? yeah it's, it's it's been a long weekend that's for sure but <laughs> it's you know it's been really enjoyable must say uh, without sort of been been sort of woe is me oh it's a long weekend long weekend for everyone but yeah it's um it has been a lot of fun it's been plenty of matches that have been really enjoyable and i think i think for me that it's just about the the races sometimes just unlock that little extra extra something in a match you know in any sport regardless of what it is you gotta love a comeback and they're more available with with longer races and and yeah, the the match clock has you know at times played a part, but in the main, it's just been nice to just felt like a purist's weekend. It was something that we talked about. Uh, I spoke to Matt about this the other day, and we were we were wondering what the what the time would be set at, and obviously forty minutes during the season at, on on the ultimate, it wouldn't work obviously for a first to ten, and yeah, I think seventy is just about right. Yeah, I think so. Um, I think I had this chat with, with Chris actually, ironically, um, earlier on, but yeah, for me, I've had a few matches run pretty quick. And was, uh, Scott tidies up that one with a key shot there as a transition up the table, keyed that one really nicely. I mean, just second visits, but third and fourth visits, and that just invariably takes a lot of chunk out of the match clock. I mean, also, I mean, I think once Carl misses the eight in the the frame that got him the six red shoe out he shouldn't get another go at it really but mm. he did yeah it was a it was a funny old game also featuring for me best shot i've ever called oh i don't know if you've seen that yeah, one I today did, yeah, that I was did. a bit special i actually saw it i didn't see it i saw it out in the bar area so it was um because all, all we heard was the roar <laughs> so everyone just ran to the TV to see the replay. Like, Please play replay, and, and obviously it was, it was shown. But yeah. I, I think we played the replay about 14 times in that game. We couldn't get enough. You just keep playing that one over and over. It's, uh, it's going to be on a loop. Yeah, I think so Chris has got. Uh, sorry, uh, Scott's got a decision here. 
I quite like the shot. He, he could come off the yellow that's behind the eight. And yeah, bump that out into the red and the yellow, and yeah. Yeah, because that will squeeze squeeze plant. He doesn't have to. He could just bump it out, and uh, he's got complete control at the moment where, of course, his reds are. He has chosen to do that, but it's okay to a degree. I think Chris will probably just drop, drop the red into the right middle and then maybe play a loss of turn by clipping off the red that's near the yellow on the top left now. Yeah, Chris is... A real thinker in the game. He's very cerebral. I just wonder if he fancies this frame because he. I think, he, I think he might even play the red off the yellow, yeah. Steve, as well. Just to. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah, sorry. What was you. Well, I was just going to say, I, it wouldn't shock me if, uh, if Chris had a plan here because there's, there's options on reds here. I think, you, I think you'd prefer to be in Chris's shoes. Especially with the way that he plays. Well, I think all he can do here is just to just sort of bump the red out and maybe. Hide yeah, there'll be a safety coming here, reds. but I think he's he's making a plan for how he's going to win this frame eventually. I think he might give Scott a chance here. Yeah, I don't think that was the best shot Chris ever played. So I think Scott's looking to play the yellow off of the red to pot the yellow that's over the middle, which is a lovely little shot if it comes off. Oh, what an effort. I can't believe that's not dropped. No. But, look at the frame now. All of a sudden. Yeah, because he's got a chance now. Because he can play that red off that yellow, I think, into the middle. Yeah, and I just wonder. It's all about that top left-hand corner now, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, will he get better on a potential combination? Is he able to potentially play the red onto yellow and screw the white in behind the eight? Get complete control of the frame because Snooker's got behind that behind the eight ball, but it's risky. Yeah, you get that wrong by a centimeter and you give the frame away. Yeah. But just looking forward, Steve, I'm I'm, I'm just I, I don't know how Chris can can win the frame from this visit though, where that red is at the moment. And believe it or not, the viewers at home are watching you thinking no, but that red that the white closest to actually will drop in the middle. Very acute, but yeah, we're we'll glad to be right behind it. Chris is going because you yeah. wouldn't have potted two balls without it. But I do just wonder what the plan is at the top of the table because I can't imagine he'd have got too much better on a potential well, combination than where he was. The only shot I can see him doing now, Steve has said, try and get the cube uh, the cue ball to the top cushion near the end of the clearance and play the back mm. double on the red and bump the uh, eight ball out at the same time. Nice controlled shot. He's a little bit unlucky there as that sat actually on the rail. And he's left to flick this back across with quite a lot of left hand side now to get back across the table. I think that's anyway, that's all I can see him doing here is just going up for the, for the double on the red. Always missable that with the with the left hand side. Again, yeah, a little bit of work for Scott where the yellow is now. Scott's having none of it. Containing shot, but he has given Chris a little sniff again. But he has blocked that double off, so yeah, that's quite a clever shot from Scott there because mm. he's almost he's daring Chris to move that red out of the way for him. That's a really canny little shot. Yeah, Chris didn't want to anything to do with that red that's hovering over the pocket. It's quite a nice shot as well to uh, make that yellow a bit more trickier to get on, but I don't see Scott going here either. Maybe considering playing the up and down and trying to take the red out the Off the corner yeah, pocket. I like that shot a lot. I think he was going to play the loss of turn next, wasn't he? Once yeah. He'd, uh, once he put, potted that. Well, he's got a five to three advantage, so 
I think that would have been four to three. Here. Yeah, absolutely. Is Chris oh. just going to try and double this now? Back down to the red over the pocket. No. Well, he's saying to Scott, all right then. Clear it's not, up. It's not bad, that shot. Quite, quite happy with that, really. Yeah, I don't mind that, because Scott's got to play a really good shot to deal with that yellow at the bottom of the table. And there's no hiding place now for him. So he's going to play a lot of turn. <laughs> Like hot potato this frame, isn't it? Well, like, I th you've got, got to, after you, after you. I think you've got to make the combo here, Scott. Well, yeah, you've got to give it a go, for sure. Where do you hide the white? Well, you don't, really. Do you know what? It's got a crazy shot I've just spotted here. You could play the yellow off of the red to pop the red over the pocket and screw the white back over to the side rail. So just a loss of turn. Keyboard's he's done really well there. Mentioned in the, in the last phrase, said, yeah. "Where do you hide the white?" Well, there's your answer. There it is. Very good. Do either of these guys know what colour they're on at the moment? <laughs> <laughs> There's lots of turn available to CD, but again, it's hiding the cue ball now. It's so little. Well, he, he might try and send the red up towards the the eight here, just to make that a bit more trickier for Scott to get to. Whilst taking the yellow off yeah. the table like that. That's what he's tried to do. He's slightly overrun, but it's still a good, very good cue ball. Well, Scott's going to have a double at most on the eight if he gets that. I tell you, if you were a betting man, you'd be all over the shop in this frame, wouldn't you, with who the <laughs> favourite is? Yeah, the favourite now is whoever's at the table. Yes. <laughs> That's lovely bit of Q in there. Very good shot. A little bit unlucky how well he struck it, to be fair, but. He's got a Q another one in now. I think he's just enough, just about skinny enough to pot this and come off the back cushion and sort of nudge the red. I think it's one of those you've just got to concentrate on the pot here because the pot's everything just to keep it, you know, give it an opportunity. He was able to nip it. Wow, what do we know? Yeah, good reaction he got on the cue ball there. So it will be the double. Yep. I always favour punching these as well rather than the, the slow roll because you bring the slide into play if you slow roll it. Yeah, Punchy brilliant. Well done at the conclusion of this one. It's an absolute cracker to finish with as well. Yeah, very, very nice one. Chris would love that eight ball to drop. It has, and this will present him a really nice chance, I think. Course, eight ball will come no, up, of course. Yeah, yeah, no golden break in uh, operation this weekend. Because he's probably thinking typical. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> favouring the uh, reds here. It's just his opener, isn't it? Yeah, it's probably going to be the, the red to the top left. Maybe screw over to the side cushion, but... I mean, yellow's just got too many ifs, buts and maybes for me. There's Yeah, that red hovering over the middle pocket's big on yellow's, isn't it? Yeah, so... Yeah, it has to be reds. First shot's tough, but then yeah. after that you'd expect CD to be able to pick it apart once he gets control of that cue ball. Okay, so the red that's directly in as he's looking across now, that obviously does pass the other red. You don't you want to pot this clean, you don't want to nudge that other red that's next to the middle because you could potentially knock it somewhere awkward. It's yeah. all about a cannon here maybe on the on the red below the red that he's hitting. This could be the key to the frame. It's okay, I think, because he's got the red to middle. I think he's not that into a plant, which is a, quite fortunate. Yeah, the plant's set, and I think he can just get through to that red over the middle pocket. It, I mean, it, it looks close. I should be looking at the overhead one, shouldn't I? What's wrong with me? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, this... That's, that's very tight, actually. It's very tight. Because on the other angle, from that angle there, it looks like... So, oh, oh, that's even better. He's on the plant now. Well, that one didn't look on from, from what I was looking at. What do I know? Yeah, squeeze it through. That's okay. 
he's got a little bit of work then. So it'll be left middle, left corner. And Any reason why Chris has gone back to being CD? Yeah, I just don't think he enjoyed it. I think he just wanted the rebrand. No, listen, there's nothing wrong with it. I think it's actually quite cool. Yeah, I, I enjoyed Judgment Day, but I think he, uh, he just felt like it wasn't really him. I know that um, we've been playing Interleague over the years for Maiden Day, and we come up against Colchester quite a lot. And that's Decent Interleague battle, that. <laughs> yeah, they were. Obviously, Chris and uh, Sean Story, and to name you know, a few others guys in that team, really good side, and we did all seem to get the better of them in recent years, which is good for us. But anyway... Um, but they Just drop that one in there. Yeah, might as well. <laughs> they, um, I'm pretty sure they used to call him Christmas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Seasonal nickname, maybe. Yeah. So this is all about just topping through and just running through the yellow. Like so. Very nice. I can call the shots and I've managed to play a few of them this weekend, which has been even better. Yeah, enjoyable, mate. It's a nice finish from Chris Day. Wasn't as easy as it might have been. Nope. Crunch that really nicely. And oh, that's the only problem you get sometimes with the cut break. You get the dreaded. Uh, do you know, I've only spotted the, the crazy three ball plant into the uh, top round corner here. Well, could you sneak it in the middle if it's on the jaw? No, I think it's. I don't think you can get the thin. Sorry, I don't think you can get the. I think the eight's in the way of the, yeah. the potting angle, maybe, to put that yellow in. Yeah, awkward. This is this is really tricky now. Because the more yellows he starts to clear off the table, if he doesn't deal with the area on the right-hand side, he could just play himself into trouble here. I just wonder if that was a case of assigning the colour set then taking on the big shot. Is he looking at that three-ball plant now? It's the top corner, I mean. The only trouble is, is the, the yellow that he... He strikes first. I can't see it going anywhere than in amongst the red and the red and the eight. So I think it ended up looking like a real wild one. I think if we tied to back down here, I'd be I'd be tempted just to maybe flick off this yellow at the bottom of the table and just leave the white behind the red. But no, Scott's having a go. Well, he's seen something we haven't because this does not look like a finish. I'm not very impressed with all these good pool players that are called Scott, by the way. Yeah, yeah so I, I've, I've got a been a good run for the Scots though. I've got a heck of a list to <laughs> contend with. <laughs> it's quite, I think it's one of the most common names on the on the tour as well. Weirdly, yeah, there's a fair few. Yeah, I, 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 I'm not criticising because obviously Scott's got further than me, but I, I just felt that that was always a well, fair enough. Tough. I am. Yeah, okay, <laughs> I. <laughs> I just can't believe that's ever the shot there, really. No. Um, I think even if you go into that crisply, full in the face, I don't think they're going to go anywhere anyway. Yeah, Chris is going to make him suffer. Yeah, I think from the moment you took your colour set there and you committed to going for that chance, yeah. I just can't believe that was there. If you didn't have a way to solve those two yellows other than screwing into them from the top of the table I just don't think you can go there realistically and we could be here for a little while because Chris is not going to commit until he knows he can no. win the frame so there's there's a well, few more fun and games to be had here I think maybe, maybe, this, maybe this was part of uh, Scott's MO for this frame you know maybe he just didn't didn't want to get embroiled in something so he just tried to make something happen but I mean yeah good luck with this one well Chris doesn't want to snooker him too well because he wants Scott to be able to hit it. Of course. He, w he wants to create some natural sort of movement there. I think the middle pocket's in the way of the natural two cushion escape here. And I wouldn't be surprised if the white just flew straight in the middle pocket without touching anything here. And Scott would probably take that as well if that happened. Oh, he's got, got Carl Morris ideas going on. Well, I'll tell you what, that... That looks like a fantastic shot. Are we going to see see that again? I mean, that was oh, absolutely what a shot that was. Wow, what's going on today with people just arcing off cushions? 
<laughs> it's a terrific shot, and it, the, the the only downside for Scott is I just don't think it's going to well, get him very what? far in the f in the frame. The only shame. Do you know what? He might be able to cut this yellow in the top left hand corner, believe it or not. And if he does, he's going to get movement on those those three balls on the rail. Well, hold on to your hats, folks. Oh, how how has he not? Well, mine's just fallen off. How has that not off. touched anything there? I'm having to pick up my hat off the floor. What a pot. And <laughs> desperate not to clip anything. I'll tell you what. Fair play to him. That's a really good shot as well. I mean... It, He's done what he can. Yeah. I think he might find himself snoopers again in a couple of moments, but... I still can't believe he's popped that yellow and not touched anything, can you? <laughs> well, having a look at that shot. Watch the cue ball here. We know it goes in. Whoa. Oh, does not miss by much. The one thing you would say is the ball that it was closest to was the, uh, was the most pokey out red. And I have a feeling that if he'd have hit that any harder... Uh, or if he hit that with any pace, he might well knock the eight ball in. So maybe a bit of an escape for him, yeah. but CD's going to continue to make him suffer. Am I just going to let that go, the pokey out red? Or can I comment on the pokey out red? You can comment on what you like. <laughs> <laughs> Once you've got that microphone, it's, it's Mate, all for I love it. It's a, great, it's a great line. Love it. Yeah. Is he going to go for the jewels? No. That's a foul, I think. I think they'll check that, but I'm pretty sure that might be in the eight first. Just... It just didn't feel right. Yeah, well, we'll have a look at it as yeah. uh, as referee Orich Tesco joins us in the studio to have a look at it as well. Oh, that is well. I say this every time we do this. Yeah, I'm just glad I'm not a ref. So we're super slow mo in now. Oh, I think it's okay. It's okay. I think to me that looks all right. Yeah. Oh, we've got a different opinion in there. I'm feeling like he's. He might just be clipping the eight first here, but because of the line the eight takes, yeah, yeah, imp impossible for me to tell. I, that to me looks a little bit like simultaneous contact, but I mean, again, I'm not a referee, and I'm very glad I'm not one because no. they have a very difficult job. I don't know if you can call that a foul. I don't know. So, oh, referee Orich no. is is confident enough to call it and. You know, he's one of the best in the business. I respect yeah. his decision. I'm Fair glad enough. it's not me who has to call it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But, um, the one thing you should say uh, is it, I don't think it's going to make a huge difference as to no. who wins this frame. I mean, Chris has literally moved the white ball about a foot away from where it, where it landed <laughs> yeah. anyway, hasn't he? So it's, it's just yeah. a case he can just pick his route now. Yeah, a little bit much ado about nothing, but... I feel that where the eight is at the moment... Um, it's probably nicer for a double, but the route he's taking here, he well, if he puts this red to the left corner now and then leaves the one over the bottom right, then I think he's going to go for the double. No, okay, so he's going to play the right way of doing it, I think, which is to Scrub the table, leave himself half ball on the red into the top right, and then just drift the cue ball over. He has got the option, of course, he doesn't quite land in it right. He can screw down for the for the eight as well, for the double. Yeah, playing it the, the proper way. Yeah, absolutely. He's, he's just that horrible off angle that's the worst angle. Yeah, he wanted to be further up the table. He's a bit short. I mean, do you top it, top it through with left hand side to get somewhere on the right, left hand side of the table? Do you? The danger is when playing with top on this table is you it just take, dance with it? the devil a little bit. Yeah, you got to play it really well, especially because the cushion skid as well. We don't know after contact they don't actually. That's what he's playing. He's loading it a bit of left. Yep. There was no check there at all, and. Is he gone too far, oh, Chris? That must have been plain ball then, surely. Right, it looked like it. Or it, it looked like the side like just left. didn't take. Yeah. It looked like the side didn't take. I mean, that is... 
That is the worst result for the CD since if the dawn of the MP3. <laughs> <laughs> if he can see the um, the side of the eight here, he, c he can play a half decent cue ball to the top rail. But you, you want to get a touch in the top cushion here just to put the pressure on Scott. It's not bad. It's got. It's a good line. Yeah, I can see what he's trying to do. He's trying to cover up the bottom left pocket. He's not quite got cue ball and object ball there. You fancy Scott Pope here. It's not far enough actually enough this though, Steve. And you can't do a lot to affect it with the cue ball being so close to the cushion either. Yeah, I he's think just having a look at it. I think it's just dawned on him. He realised he's uses extension. He's got to dig into this, I think. Or play it really hard. Oh, he just avoided it. The trouble is, but by doing that, to stop the in-off, he's uh, lost position. But better to be still at the table than uh, to go in-off and have nothing. So, <sighs> Up and down? I'm going to go for the double into the top round corner here and try and get a good cue ball and hopefully it rattles and goes safe if I don't get it. Just Bang. like that, nailed. Scott Pope with one that will really hurt Chris Day there. That can be very mischievous. So Chris is uh, sticking with a cut break, as is Scott. So he needs a nice firmer contact on that second ball this time to get, this, to get the two hits. No, he's lost it again. That was worse than the first one because it only, only went straight enough one cushion. There we go. That's that's what happens when you make a big mistake and you lose a frame that you should have won. You're going off. Paul God's are laughing at laughing at him as well. So every yellow has a pocket here. It's just about keeping the cue ball out in the open. That's a nice little kiss on the eight as well. I mean, a little hand, very handy. Scott seems to adapt really well out here. I noticed, uh, was it one of the, the... Always played well when I've seen him, yeah. Yeah, was it the... He played in last man standing, um, right, he did which that. we saw him on here. And mm -hmm. I, yes, he was in the amateur championships as well. He had a decent but run in that. Was it like semi or last group stage you got to, didn't he, I think? Yeah, it was an event that I didn't see a huge amount of, but I know he went to the final eight. So he went. He obviously won his weekend. Yeah. Um, yeah but yeah. I, I think he's a super player. I've got a lot of time for his game. He's a real student as well. He, like, he loves the game. He, he's a very avid practicer as well. He's, he does different videos on social media and stuff like that. So, Yeah, I, I really think he's great. And whenever I've spoken to him, he's... He's down to earth. He, he sort of—I think he—he's got self-confidence without veering too far in terms of you know anything like arrogance. No, I, I agree. He's, he's yeah, no, I completely agree. He's a, he's a terrific, terrific young man. Five-three, he leads. That was a was a rapid-fire reverse clearance. It just makes well that big Chris Day error in the last frame just feel even more. Yep. Massive. Oh, after last the way that time. the last frame came out for him, I don't blame him. He's got a very good front ball break. Yeah. Very nice. It's dry though. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you're right. I mean, look at that. Look at those. That spread is. How about so these lucky yellows? Get a ball. Well, I think the one thing I would say is oh, this is a decent chance you could. Get, you actually could red to the ball. It yeah. Has to be red just because though. Just saw the one at the bottom of the yeah. table, yeah. And the one on the, the right-hand side as well, past the middle. Yeah, got to be red. this one. Played it well. Where's your next ball? He's, I think he's on the one to the top. Yeah, he's OK. He's, he's OK, yeah. Weirdly, the, the trickiest red for him now could be the one that's just below the, the break line. So obviously he'll drop this one in the, in the corner now, but he can't pot that one below it just yet. I just wonder if it goes to the left middle. Just wonder if it threads through that gap. There we go. I've been caught out by the overhead again. Uh, mate, it, uh, I can see it. Well, welcome. This is this is yeah. my 
weekly existence. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I could have sounded so impressive then by saying that I think there's red flies in the middle and I can clearly see that it does. Yeah, there you there go. Yeah, yeah, very it's, nice. It's a, it's a nice little layout, this. He'd love to be just off straight on this just so he can punch over for the, uh, the red next to the red that he's about to play. Yeah, it's good. So this next positional shot, is it as easy as it looks? He's he's gonna have to pay us with maybe a trace of running left hand side. Now do you are you brave to come across the front of the eight for the inside red at the bottom or do you go the other side? Oh, do you do need far enough? I don't think he I don't think he committed to one or the other there. I don't yeah, mean that in a, you he's know. He's fuming with himself. I think he's, I think he's just giving him a telling off for exactly that. I mean, he, he can cut this red in, but it's, um, the white's going to be, going to be careering up and down the table. Feels like a big moment in the match for me, this. Yeah, it does. It really does. You know, we could be talking about a one frame deficit or three. Go off the side cushion. Yeah. Oh, he didn't miss that by much. He's still got some capital in the frame because the bottom right side, bottom right corner is, as we look at it from the main camera, is a pain for Scott Pope. The eight ball and his yellow are almost tied up by it. So it doesn't mean he can't go, and but it does just give him something to think about. Okay, so. I think what he's going to try and do here, I think he's going to pop the yellow in the, the uh, oh no, he's going to play lost a turn. Lost a turn, the big screw. Yeah, like that. Anywhere top left is, is good, but don't leave a... That's very good. Do you know, I've played so aggressive this weekend, I didn't even see that shot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember it actually playing that many lost of turns the whole, <laughs> the last two days. The only the downside right here is I wonder if Chris fancies the combo, because the yellow's gone quite far in the pocket. I mean, it's... Steve, he's got no choice, I it, don't think. Well, yeah, but I th what I mean is not just obviously try and play it, but really fancy making yeah. it. If you spin this on the right-hand side, you can have to, you can transfer the spin onto the, the red onto the yellow, like so. Yeah. Not a bad effort. Too thin, but. <coughs> so the key... Key here is a. I think Scott might have tried to give that you know, a little nudge on the side rail there, which is didn't need to, but mm. I don't mind somebody trying to bring a ball off the rail when you're going to land on something else. Because obviously, even if he he hasn't brought it out, but he's still got choices. It's all about picking the uh, the order now. So get yourself back down the right hand side of the table for the eight. So is he going to drop this in and come round off uh, two cushions again? It's going to be going. It's another go here. No, <laughs> that yellow is not for budging. Backed himself into a bit of an awkward situation now, Steve, in this frame. Yeah, hasn't he just? on proper tricky now. Sort of similar sort of energy to what Chris did a couple of frames ago. Yeah. Can you recover the situation? No. Mm. But the way the way the way the game has gone. If Scott does take this, this will probably hurt Chris more because he's been sitting there in the hope that he's going to get back to the table and it might, might not transpire that way. So it's a back double. Lovely, but has he got any kind of an angle to get across? Mm, maybe. Is this like a check off the cushion though and not... Is it kind of like going to get trapped and not go very far? That's the only thing I'm thinking. Is he going to consider playing the uh, skill shot? All very valid questions. He is, you know. Lesser of a few evils is the choice. Massive shot in the match. 
So he's only six three or five four. So it's, it's just set to the right of the pocket. But if you if you just forget the reds there and just pop the black in the centre of the pocket, it should follow it in. Oh, oh it thought about it. <laughs> it thought about it. Oh. Just teetered on the edge of the pocket. And Chris Day gets away with one and is back in the match at 5-4. Do you know, I think Chris should be happy with the 5-4 score at the moment. Oh, he's over the moon for it to be 5-4. Anyway, <laughs> back to the pool. Um, so that's a much better cut break. And is he going to get any, any luck? No. no, he is not. Much better strike this time. Well, CD was uh, was on comms for me a couple of hours ago. And... Uh, following the conclusion of that match welcomed in all the Spurs supporters who had just gone from full time of that match to uh, tuning into the pool and Chris is a uh, is an avid gooner in case you didn't know he was uh, I didn't know that he was I actually liked him before <laughs> yeah I was going to say yeah might change your opinion of him no not at all but he was uh, he was he was thrilled and very welcoming let me tell you you worry about, worry about your own league position don't worry about ours <laughs> <laughs> so a little bit riskier, but Scott can pop this yellow in the middle and just sort of, sort of, sort of nudge the red and yellow that are close together in the middle of the table, because that yellow there is not really going anywhere at the moment unless it goes top right after he pots this. Okay, so that's what he's going to do. Has he landed on one? He might be forced to take the plant here. I think red, on, uh, sorry, yellow onto yellow. Awkward bridging over. So it proved to be. Now then, Chris. Yeah, it was just awkward enough, wasn't it? I think he might just just try and get on those res later on now. I think he's going to have to go here. Well, the thing is, as awkward as that corner pocket is, he doesn't need to use it, and he's got options to to get down essentially where the yellows are and then the reds go across the bottom cushion. Exactly, that's what I mean. I think, you know, he has to sort of work away getting across there. I mean... He could get there now if he felt really fruity. Yeah, he could, he could pop the red in the middle and screw through the gap of the two reds. So you've got the red directly to the, well, the blue spot on the snooker table and the red below it. If you screw through that gap, you might be able to get across and down. I think that's... I think you, it's the shot to try because if you don't get it right, you've got options, don't you? But... I wonder. I'm just thinking, can he can he pop this red down the rail and beat the yellow and go across? So what will happen is the white will arc off of the off of the side cushion and go around the yellow over yeah. towards the left hand side. Almost through the gate of the yellows. Yeah. He might even get lucky and get a flick off the the top yellow and go still get over there. <coughs> oh, he's got to have a plan. I'm not sure what it is. But he's got to have a plan. I'm not sure about that loss of turn here because unless he plays it at speed and gets Scott's yellow away from the pocket, because I think otherwise Scott will just play the loss of turn back. Oh, what a wow. shot! What a shot! How on earth has he squeezed I, that red? I in? don't know. I don't know. I think that's. That's an amazing that's shot. That's such clever knowledge to know that it's going to get that flick off of the second yellow as well. Yeah, that's an absolutely brilliant bit of vision from Chris Day. I'm going to practice that one this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Just so I've never seen that shot before, so... Yeah, that's such a good bit of vision from CD. You know what's happened there, don't you? You know, when you used to practice with Sean Story all the time, I bet they've... I bet there is an ace shot that those guys haven't <laughs> played or practiced together, is there? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay, so just got a stun across and uh, front of the yellows and back over again. Very nice. Talking of very nice, is, is his Q chalk like lilac colour? Yeah, he's, he's got that? the. Um, I think he's got the the powdery pink town. That is one. Is that what Dempsey, Steve Dempsey uses as well? Yeah, isn't it? I believe or? so. I'm guessing it's a, the same brand of chalk. It's just the colour, is it? Or? Well, it, it, it is town. I know that, but. 
as for, I think, oh, well. Wow, I don't quite know. More importantly, that's a really surprising miss. Wow. I just wonder, because he put quite a lot of side on that shot, whether it's just it's thrown the cue ball, because he ended up missing it thin, isn't he? Look, missed it on the thin side. Scott's turn to uh, torture Chris now. I'm really surprised by that. I think Chris has got to come off his back cushion here and just slap the red. Try and knock it clean in the right middle or just get it moving. He's looking at going up and down, but... Well, I think his thinking is if I, you know, get it pushed towards that bottom right corner pocket, it, it introduces maybe an element of risk. Oh, my gosh. He hasn't, has he? Oh he hasn't, gosh. has he? <laughs> oh, 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 CD. Need to follow it up with the eight ball now, though, after you've uh, done something like that. Yeah, got to make these. Just to make it level as well. Was it ever in doubt? <laughs> oh. Chris Day with an absolute world he ever read there. Back to the cut break again. I mean, he struck the last one really nice. I know it was dry, but... Oh, Paul players up on the front. fickle. <laughs> Cubal straight in the top corner. Yep, cheers. And he'll be thinking, yep, not so lucky now. Well, he'll be thinking, how have I gone in off in the top corner with a cut break? And that's because he got that second click, which I was talking I mean, about. It, 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 it is a fair question. I yeah. mean, I think you're within your rights to feel aggrieved in that scenario, yeah. aren't you? But CD now with a, with a chance to really just put well, the pain on. It's the yellow, isn't it? Yeah. Nice shot. And he's held that well because he didn't want that yellow to get involved with the reds and the eight ball. So he's he's come up okay. His worst red is the red that's directly next to the eight at the moment. He want to try and get that cleared out of the way as soon as possible. And that just opens the eight ball up to, well, every pocket by the looks of it. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a fiddly little one. I think it's one he can pick apart. The red right next to the eight ball, once the other two are, are gone, goes in quite a few pockets. It's just about getting your order and your pattern right here. I'd love to have been a bit straight on this red down the rail just to get rid of that now as well, but I think he might have to come back for that. Yeah, he's he's already going to start working his way through. Is he going to, is he going to flick the eight here? No, so he's, he's targeting the one that we've mentioned. Yeah, goes bottom left. Yeah. And I think he's got himself a little angle so he can go back to the one on the side rail if he wants to bit of a tight window isn't it but he could be right if not he could always just use the yellow to hold position here yeah I don't know if not in off though misjudged the uh, the cannon very surprising for Chris well he wanted to feather it but the, the issue is to be fair it, it was <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I'm trying to just play devil's advocate here but it looked like he had to play a little bit of a stun to get the required kiss, you know? Yeah, well, he's obviously tried to sort of top through. But the issue is he's still got to make the red all the way down to the bottom of left. So, he, so he's, got to, he's got to put a little bit of pace on it. But of course, yeah. as you know, the harder you play it, the wider the cue ball throws. Yeah. And all of a sudden, he's gone into the, he's gone into the yellow and, and gone in off. I think, almost think there... Maybe he didn't hit it, it hard it, enough then. Well, yeah, if you get, get the wide, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. If, you, if you're going to, if you're going to play that shot, play it quite hard and then get full ball and then yeah, it, you don't have that danger. I don't think he could sneak by that yellow. No. I think it might have no, been the no, plan right. originally, but yeah, he, I think no, he I just had too much angle for no. it. I think so. the only way he sneaks by that yellow is if that red barely drops in the bottom left and even then it, he might not still have. Yeah. Well, this cox uh, it's just a screw across the face of the eight ball here. Like so. Well, this match has been all over the place. <laughs> you can, if you if you had the live in play odds, as you mentioned earlier, they'd be <laughs> they'd be absolutely everywhere in this <laughs> one. No such thing as momentum. Can't trust either of them at the moment. Scott's well on his way to uh, getting that one frame lead again. I 
I mean, you know, it's, it's marginal, but I, I feel like Scott's looked the better player out there so far. But again, Chris is only one frame adrift, so... OK, cut break or front ball, quick. Oh, he's too slow. He's going to go cut break again. He's going to stick with that cut break all the way through. I'd, I'd be very surprised if Chris changed. He needs to thicken this as well. Get a nice thick contact on that second. Which he has. Has he had any luck? No. Now Scott... <sighs> All about one yellow. That's the one that's just hidden behind the red on the uh, left hand side. Could make a case for reds. Actually, looking at it. Wonder if he can pot this red and. Uh, he pots this red, plough into the yellow on the left, and plough into the rest of them. And he tried to. That red may still double later on, but he hasn't got many balls to bring it, break it out now. So obviously both these guys will be, well I'm assuming they'll both be in Blackpool in a few weeks and that will soon come around again, isn't it? The uh, it really will. Events, uh, it's it's a good fall. It's a good time to be a player at the moment. Lots of tournaments on the horizon. And maybe a bit warm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, chance would be a fine thing. So Steve, he's looking here to pot this red in the right middle and screw across the table to try and bring this other red out. Come on, it was tough. Just forgot to pot it. Chris has got the same problem still that uh, Scott had all along, and that's that red and yellow tied up on the left-hand side. Yeah, it's just the pace that's beaten the pocket there. Yeah. But, yeah, this is this is real tricky. A again, a little bit of a case there for me of Scott chasing a bad finish. Mm. Sometimes you have to let the balls dictate. And as frustrating as it is to not be able to go and and take it down. You know, I think how Carl Sutton played earlier was a great example. Never played a... Never took on a finish that wasn't there. Yeah. Always played the right shot, you felt like. Well, I feel that's a case a lot of the time with, with Chris as well, with Chris Day. I think, you know, I think Chris will... If he's 6-1 six, six down or 6-1 up, I think he'll still play the frame exactly the same way each time. It's just that he... He's not quite on it at the moment, is he, in this match? Yeah. Not sure. Scott, if the red goes past the yellow. I'm not quite sure if it ever went, really, but... Um, so, decision time for uh, Chris Day. Does he uh, drop this yellow in the left middle? And the yellow that's further down the table. Can he pop that in the bottom right corner and uh, go into that little cluster? No? Okay, so... <laughs> oh, that nearly uh, did a Cabri's parrot then, did yeah, you see that? Yeah, didn't it? Did a little roll around the pocket. Yeah, relieved to see that one drop in. So, a three ball plant incoming. Nice angle for this as well. It's a cushion first and then the red. Yeah, nice. Yeah, nice lovely. Play another one now. Yeah, it could have come out kinder. It really could have. It may just pass, you know, that top yellow, but it, it might be off the the far jaw. It's uh, it's tight, and the the plant's horrible as well because it's an unnatural plant to play. Does this just squeeze by on the right hand side? No, that was oh, the plant. He's played it that's really so, well. That's so much harder than he made that look. Oh, the lesser spotted rest. I can tell it's the first time that's come out wow. in a day and a half's worth of pool. <laughs> well, well, two full days of pool, I should say. Quite a fancy one as well, by the looks of it. Yeah, it's a good gear here at yeah. Players Pool and Snooker. <laughs> they look after you. Okay, so yellow top left, yellow right middle, yellow left middle. 
It just yeah, affords he, you the best position to get back on the eight, doesn't it? He, he's absolutely plum. Should be. You, you've got to say, I mean, the two shots he's played there, the, the, the two plants were, were yeah. absolutely exceptional. This is just about holding yourself together and, and completing the job because he's in he's in perfect position. Yeah, the angle's perfect. He doesn't even have to force this in. He can just let's just drop this drop this in and just bounce the white out. Probably to more or less where the yellow is now. That far out will be fine. Doesn't have to force it across. Yeah. Absolutely. He's going to stun it just up the rail, just a fraction. So somehow Chris has uh, got himself to six six, and oh, this I feel like Chris is slight favourite because I think he'll be so happy to be at six six with some of the balls that he's missed and the situations he's got himself into. And um, Paul and cut break coming up again. And yeah. Obviously, the last one he was so unlucky to get that that kicked up into the top right hand corner. Well, just keep an eye. That way again. So he's definitely got a ball. So Hope one go. Yeah, tricky finish though, and just keep an eye on that match clock as well, Scott, because this is this is going to zero on the clock. I feel like this isn't bad, you know. I feel like he can pot the red into the bottom right hand corner here, and he can open. He can just go into the little the little group and open all this up in one shot. That's the red he's targeting, I think. So pot this red, come off the side cushion, and just just gently run into him. I think I, I don't. I can't see how he can fail to be on a, a red. It may look a bit reckless, but these balls need developing somehow. So he's checked back across. I think he can pick him apart. I think the red goes right middle, the middle one of the three. It does now, yeah. And it'll, you run that through, you've got the ones at the bottom right. And it, it's not bad, it's fiddly. That's the only thing you'd say. I can't, I, I'm still a bit sickened by my comment there that I've, I've, I've said to go into, the, go into them and they all go because that's my little bugbear is cannon balls <laughs> when yeah, you don't need yeah. to and I've just I've just said it oh yeah just crash into him and see what happens Can we, it's too late to edit it out it's live isn't it <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long day or two yeah, it has I've let myself off that yeah, it has big day for you tomorrow as well British amateur <laughs> gosh yeah yeah um, yeah like I said I didn't even know about that until three days ago that, that competition I yeah Br Brucey bonus for you it was I looked at the live scoring to, just to you know, to recheck who I was playing in the British Open, and I was like, "What's what's this British Open amateur thing here?" I was like, oh, "Okay, thank you very much." Well, I think it's a really nice touch for the for the players, particularly the amateurs, because obviously, you know, you go to all the effort to qualifying for this tournament, yeah. And you could very easily, all of a sudden, play two matches against established pros and find yourself out of the competition. Yeah, do you know but, what? It's a good show, actually. But actually you get a little bit of an extra reward for sticking around, for committing your time, and all the rest of it. Yeah, and you get. You get some matches that are right on your level, and you can go win a trophy. Well, we're playing the the challenger races tomorrow as well. You know, first to sixes, yeah. so it's it's what we know, it's uh, what we're accustomed to, uh, so to say, uh, so to speak. Sorry, so yeah, looking forward to it. It'd be, um, I did have to, not so much grovel, but <laughs> I did. Um, all right, that was a the yeah, that was a really classy finish from Scott Pope. All right, has he got the ball? He has, and... He's got a split. He's oh, got a he's little bit of work, but he's got a split. How many frames have we had that those two balls on the left-hand side? I don't think there's it's there's weird. been many. In fact, the last frame was probably the first example of it where a player could come to the table and essentially there was no work to do. It was yeah. pick your route and, and make your clearance. It's there's been work. Like you said, it's been hard work, hasn't it? Yeah, pretty much every frame. Okay, so I think I'll see what Chris is going to play here. No, you know, I'll give it up, even predict it now. <laughs> what I actually thought he might have done there, Steve, I thought he might have just just beaten the yellow. And you see the two reds that are together on, on the um, mm. bottom of the table. He could have played either of those two reds off of the yellow into the corner. He's still going to play that now, but from the cushion, this is really... Or was he going to top it through and try and bring it out to play? Time foul. That was a time foul, surely. Yeah, hundred percent. I don't even think. Oh, yeah, Orich isn't even going to look at it. Unusual for Chris, I think. To yeah, big, very unusual. I think he, uh, I think he just miscounted the beeps because he, he wasn't even close to playing it. And he didn't use his extension either. But it, it, it's always the transition 
onto 15 seconds a shot, yeah. which can catch you out, and we are into that zone of the match now. I get your point exactly, but you know, Chris is one of the most, one of the most experienced players out there on these time conditions. I mean, him and Sean have had lots of runs in the pairs cup together, haven't they? Chris has well, been. Well, I, I know Chris practices on the 15 second shot clock. He he'll be really sore about that, but he's you've got to, you've got to have a short memory in this game. Maybe maybe it's not affected him too much because he's straight back to the table. And that was a shot. Looks like oh, a minute ago. And he's how played well it now. he played that! Brilliant. So, reprieve for the time foul. Yeah, and you got to say as well, from what I saw, Scott himself played a really strange shot with cue ball in hand. Oh, now he's going off in the middle. What and is going on, Mr. Reds? It's all happening. On? It's all happening, Scott. <laughs> he's smiling. Oh, all oh, the little fears come out there as well. So it's so what about this yellow on the right hand side? Can he can he put it? And he hasn't got an extension left. He's used it. He's going to time foul. Wow, well, that could be. Are we going to check in that one? Yeah. So referee yeah, Orange called a timeout. The gut instinct for me was that was a time foul as well. The 15 seconds is is wreaking havoc out there in the arena. It's wreaking absolute havoc. It's massive this as well because if it is time foul, then Chris can just take the pit of cool wall up and just pop that red in the top round corner. Well, it's got it, three drop-ins after that. I mean, it's it's an error that would cost that would cost Scott the frame. And you have to say, okay. considering he's had cue ball in hand twice in this frame, yeah, Scott's made a couple of big errors. I mean, as, as well as Chris, obviously, uh -huh. but a couple of huge errors for Scott. Chris has got that. Uh, sorry, Scott's got that guilty look. Yeah, oh, yeah, he's been speaking of the bad news. Oh, it's such a bad oh, error. And now he can pop this this red up the rail and uh, it's gonna be seven seven. Well, the 15 second shot clock is brutal. You know Scott's going to be playing this back when he gets home, don't you? After this w this weekend. Oh, yeah, I no, wouldn't th be. That shot to see if he was a time <laughs> Oh, okay, I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I don't think he's a braver man than me. He's going to have all the stopwatches out and uh, everything at home, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, we did have referee Orich come into the into the booth to have a listen to that one. He was he was very. Well, he was in and out with the decision. I think yeah. more to confirm his suspicions, really. This is what I like as well, is that. I'm glad we've got our our VAR, so to speak, just to get these things checked, rather than putting the pressure on the referees as well. It's uh, it's good to have it, isn't it? Yeah, it's a nice fallback. You saw with the first one that on Chris that Orange was very happy to call it if he's confident, but mm. th there's just no use risking it, especially at such a crucial moment of the frame there. I mean, the previous foul that he called, he's definitely got a referee's eye, because even, even on super slow-mo, I still can determine. Yeah. So, well, you know, I trust him, obviously, but I, I still couldn't see it. Well, what a massive frame in the match that was. But with cue ball in hand twice there, Scott Pope well, has me, thrown that frame away. For me, it was forgetting how many, how often I tether, you know, when I'm actually lining up a shot. So I tend to maybe go one, I don't know, actually, don't even know, but maybe like four times of actually queuing the, queuing the shot before I strike the cue ball. And I think I just mistimed that because I was, I was listening to the, the beep, beep. So I knew it was it five, can mess four, with you. three, and then... Before I know it, it was like, uh, uh, and as I'm striking it, so. It can mess with you. Anyway, enough sure. of my uh, shortcomings. <laughs> so, again, we've got this red yellow situation on the right hand side, but. There's always been a pull, hasn't there? But I think these reds are a lot nicer to. Well, to you get could that leave developed. that red alone. That, that doubles, I think. There's a case to be made for potting the red in the middle and playing a double next, isn't there? I feel about how confident you're feeling. Oh, Does he play it now? Does it go past the other red now? Get a move on, Chris. <laughs> so is this the double now? I think it's too, a bit too much of a double kiss from that line, so is he going to be looking to bring this out? It's running out of options here. Is he going to be cheeky and play the red off of the red that's next to the yellow? Played a similar shot a minute ago into the corner. He looks too far away. Yeah, he's, he's just forced it across. Don't think the red's close enough to the middle pocket for that shot. I feel like he's... Um, oh, he's got the double now. Is it, can he avoid the double kiss? What a lovely shot. That was so comfortable, wasn't it? I thought he'd have to... Yeah. Really hard to strain it up. It was a... 
Really, really well judged. And he almost yeah. he used the double kiss on the yellow yeah. to just hold the cue ball as well. That was really smooth. This is all about the angle now on the uh, on the red. Which he's got. Yeah, it's perfect. This is how you clear up on 15 seconds a shot. I don't, want to, put, I don't want to put the jinx on him. He's still got two shots to play, but this has been brilliant from CD. Just a tiny bit. He wants to get the white across the right-hand side here. Beautiful Fantastic. shot. Lovely control. This is why. This is why I was so surprised to see Chris time foul because he's so comfortable on this 15 seconds. Comfortable's not the right word. I don't think anyone's comfortable on on 15 seconds, but he is. He is as comfortable as you can look. He's, yeah. You feel like he's got his timing down. He's got the yellow in the middle. He's got red in the bottom left as well. And wouldn't you know it, is this the first split where he's had no breakouts to play? Has he got a ball? He's, he's got, got red to left middle. Yeah. Again, it's going to be the red on the left-hand side. Yeah, near, so he's got no breakout to play, but... Landing on that red below the one in the middle mm -hmm. is very difficult. And this would have been the perfect ball to get on that as well, wouldn't it? So that's now gone. He had no choice to take it then. So does he risk screwing across now for a choice of two? Well, can you stun underneath it and take it low? Yeah, he can. Lovely. Yep. That's it. So just a little gentle screw back now to not too dissimilar to where he is now. Of course, bridging makes the pot a tiny bit more difficult. It's not too taxing, but yeah, he's fine here. I think he can just top this up the table now. Steve, and he's just, it, I'm actually aiming for the, the, the break line here is my, is my aim point here. I want to get as far as the, the break line. Oh, he just caught the yellow on the way through. That's yeah, he's, he's okay. Mm. He's okay. He's just got to decide what he wants to do with the eight ball now. So and just that'll dictate which angle he leaves on the red drag, to the middle. Drag left hand side shot. Lovely. He's fine. The eight goes in the, the top left now, doesn't it? Once he pops his in off the cushion. Just wonder if Chris will um, use his experience with the clock now and just pop this eight on the. Uh, the last couple of seconds as well. I'd be... S well, he is. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't like it. No players do. This is an awkward one for all yeah. the players. There's no getting used to this. <laughs> so I would, I would leave it to a one. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, he's, he's timed it perfectly. But the I'd timing is there. <laughs> well, that's the perfect example. That yeah. just shows how he's got that tune. timing down. Yeah. So Scott Pope is going to need three. Right, right, two and a half minutes break. for Scott Pope. He Nick. needs a quick clearance here. No oh, golden break, remember. Oh, no need to get a bad... Oh, he's conceded. And he's going to concede the match. Oh. Chris Day Scott. is going to win it. That's a fantastic result for CD. Frustration for Scott Pope. <laughs> but Chris is a very, very happy boy. He's into the quarterfinals.